It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. A little bit, uh, besides the personal drama and stuff, home life. Um, right, beautiful weather right. in Detroit right now. Hi, nice Sarah summertime. in Northern Kentucky. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Crazy Witch. Jeremiah Sutton was a good friend of mine. He was just talking about you, by the way. Mm-hmm. Off the air, Jeremiah. But yes, he was. Now I lost my mouse. Crazy Witch, Jeremiah. Hello there. And Chris, welcome, Stan. How are you? So welcome. So hello, Chris Hensley. Welcome to the show, to another edition here. So yes. Yes, Grizzly, your sound is weird. I know, like nothing is working. So last night I did a live uh, on my dolls, right? So uh, I do not know what's going on with my audio. I've tried everything. I've been playing with buttons, hitting buttons, rolling with buttons. Does that sound any better? A lot better? Testing, testing. Is that better? Does that sound better, Ben? Yeah, that sounds, it sounds pretty good. It doesn't sound like uh, last week or the previous week, but it's. It's, Everybody says it's like you my mic is off. Let me check that while while you are talking. Test, test, test. One, two, three. Well, you're, you sound fine to me, but. Okay. I got my gain uh, just right where I need it to be, but uh, it sounds like it sounds yeah it sounds like there's an issue uh, in your end. Testing, the- testing. Yeah. How's that sound? There you go. Perfect. Now am I back, ladies and gentlemen, live in the saddle? Does that sound like Grizzly now? Sounds I wonder great. if that's what was going on with the music. I don't know how that the stuff works. I don't know a little bit better. Chris, does that sound better? Or does that sound like I'm back? That is it, Jeremiah says. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am back. But now I was trying to work on my other stuff. But nothing was working a minute ago, ladies and gentlemen. I was saying, it, yeah. So I did go live on TikTok last night, Val. I uh, I put my cell phone up on my banner. And I put all these cat balls along my uh, uh, dolls. And they were going nuts. And I just let it sit there for hours. But what's going on in the Bigfoot world? Anything interesting? Well, I've got uh, I've got uh, a long conversation with Richard uh, Soul of the Knox Giga theory, and right. uh, hopefully we'll have him in the, this this next uh, Sunday. But he's a very very interesting man that works uh, quite closely with uh, Barry Webster. And um, I think everybody will be happy to hear some of the stuff that, that, that he says. Oh, that'd be, that'd be interesting. See, we were talking about uh, Bigfoot incidents, right? Mm-hmm. Which ones we were talking about off the air? You're talking about the ones that were being uh, found decapitated? Yes. Foot, yes. Footprints? Uh, I was relating... Uh, last week when we when uh, jeremiah called in and he was speaking about 
he was asking about uh, abandoned buildings or structures. And uh, I think two part, a two part question was uh, about serial killers and Bigfoots. And um, um, so to answer his question about that, there is a, a weird confluence that intersects between the two, uh, according to my study, my research. Uh, and I know for a fact that uh, in the Pacific Northwest, in particular, in in the Washington area, there were several um, female bodies, human bodies found sort of in a dumping ground. And um, the search and recovery people that went out, particularly a female and her dog, canine dog, uh, located these women, and if I'm not mistaken, there was three of them, and um, the three women were uh, subsequently identified as having been connected to uh, the infamous serial killer from Michigan, who also had connections to Tacoma, Washington, and they know they follow his trail from Michigan to Washington. So they, the thought was that those victims were tied to uh, this individual. And um, for whatever reason, uh, the Bigfoots had been uh, scouting this area out and apparently had, had been looking at this evidenced by the footprints and tracks and stuff around the uh, victims, the bodies, the corpses and stuff. There was no indication that there was any predation, but um, it, it was quite interesting that the two <coughs> confluences mixed there. It was, was about this, Second part about this this question that, that Jeremiah raised last week was that in my own personal experience, um, having had the opportunity Bluetooth to disconnected. Keep going. I'm just having I'm playing with some technical stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> having uh, uh, search for a missing person, a homicide. Bluetooth victim. connected. Um, I did a lot of research and uh, went through hundreds and hundreds of um, missing persons. We got our music, brother! Go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I felt so bad. We didn't have our music. Yeah, so he was talking about that during the show, before the show. And I'm like, whoa, really? So continue on. I, I do apologize for interrupting. Mm -hmm. But you know how it is, Val, when I can't get stuff to work, and Chris and <laughs> Jeremiah, it's like, it's working. Yes, Chris, I got it. Don't so, ask me how. So the individual I was looking for disappeared. Uh, for the individual that I, look in, that I looked for um, was from Ohio. He went down, hitchhiked down to Daytona Beach, Florida. From there, he hitchhiked across the deep south made a last phone call to his mother in Louisiana at a truck stop saying that he was telling her that he was, he was afraid and he wanted to come home. He wanted his mother to go drive down there to, to Louisiana and uh, Lafayette, Louisiana to pick him up. And then the information that, that he told his mother was two men in a blue green pickup truck were bothering him. So, um, so, you know, just in my knowledge and understanding of what kind of people were, were on the loose in that time period, um, it's pretty well known that, um, that um, William Lucas, I, I, believe his, I believe his first name was William Lucas, last name was Lucas anyway, um, he was a uh, prolific serial killer of that time, 1980s. 
And he had a uh, friend who joined him on this spree that went from Florida to Texas, leaving, leaving uh, bodies all along the, the uh, roadway and the freeways. So they also had a blue green pickup truck. So the way this, this ends up is, is that, um, that I used mitochondrial DNA given to me by the um, forensic scientist down in Louisiana. And this was done by, by an act of paying it forward. I started this out as an act of paying it forward. And they in turn um, did likewise and, and supported me with the um, DNA kits, no cost, no charge, free gratis as I did with the, with the mother of this victim. I did this for her. It took me 21 months to do this. And I did it for her, no charge, free gratis. It was out of the love of my heart to, to uh, find some closure for her. And that's the way I, choose, I chose to uh, use this my curtain call to retire once this young man was found. And he was found. So he was found in, in um, uh, Buffalo, Buffalo, um, uh, outside of Houston, Buffalo Creek or Buffalo Canal or something. Somebody out there is familiar with Texas and, and the, uh, the, the uh, swamps and the canals that they have around there. They probably know better than I do. But any, in any event, it took 21 months. And because I had the DNA, because uh, I went to Ohio and took DNA samples of specimens of his surviving mother and his survi surviving sister, I was able to uh, send that in. And um, it took it took a little while to get this tested and um, checked. But what I learned was that indeed uh, they did have him, and he had been there for a number of years as a John Doe. And um, once a notification was made, it took another three months to get permits to transport him across federal and state lines back to his native home in Ohio. And that's when I retired. I retired the next day, the very next day, because as far as I was concerned, I've had enough of it. And, um, you know, I just, I just had enough. I, I've, I've seen enough. I've been through that and it was draining. It was very, very draining on me. And um, that's when I, when I stepped away from this stuff, I uh, turned to big footery and uh, got involved in this and took the, the skills and the, the things that I learned and brought it back over into the Bigfoot field. And today, um, develop four different databases and profile Bigfoots. And that's what I do. That's exactly what I do. Now, what about the ones that you're, we were talking about before the show about the ones that allegedly possibly were killed by the Sasquatch? Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's a number, number of things. And, and, uh, in the past, uh, Grizz, you've seen these databases that I have and there's, there's a number of them. And um, because because I profile a lot of a lot of things that Bigfoot does or allegedly does, uh, I'm able to look at I'm a, able to extract and, and look at some of the specific things that they do, and um, and that's how we make connections. To the Bigfoot, because in Bigfootery, there's no such thing as coincidences. Everything they do has a purpose, and everything that they do uh, leaves a trail. Most everything that they do leaves a trail. And um, in this particular, in this particular one, uh, just a short, just a short uh, understanding of what I'm talking about. Um, I've listed. Oh, I don't know, 20, uh, 20 or so events right off the uh, right out of the database. Uh, and it goes like this. One of them is body of minor 
promote Ontario found in his sleeping bag without a head. He was decapitated in his head while sleeping in a sleeping bag. Body of prospector uh, found decapitated and I believe and his cabin was burned. And I believe this was California. This is interesting to me because uh, I, rec I recollect and I recall reading in one of those 411 books where an ind a missing individual was found deceased. He went missing. He was found deceased with sand packed in his mouth. Think about that. Sand packed in his mouth. When you, when you start looking at uh, uh, the cloak and dagger secrecy uh, agencies and stuff, this is the kind of stuff that they do. But what was interesting about this, again, connected to possibly Sasquatches, is that the individual that they found deceased with sand packed in his mouth, you can't breathe, you're smothered with sand in your mouth. But that's a vicious way to die. Horrible. But the fact of, it, of the matter was, the most curious part about this was, the individual was found burned, his clothes were burned while he was wearing them. So it brings up two questions. Who put the sand in his mouth? Why did he go missing? And how did his clothes get scorched? So we look, go back and look at this, this uh, case here of this prospector that was found decap decapitated. Incidentally, that's an MO, that's a method of operation that tells you something, that's a signature that tells you something. That, that connects to Bigfoot as we go into this. You'll see, you'll see this reoccur over and over again. So, so the prospector was found decapitated and his cabin was burned. And people say, well, Bigfoot Sasquatches, they, you know, they don't use matches. I don't know what they use, but they've been connected to fires more than once, according to, according to this study and research. Absolutely, they have. Um, Here's another one in, um, I want to say that this is in Alaska. Decapitated bodies of two prospectors found near a river. Uh, here's another one. Dog sledder uh, was, was found, uh, was found uh, decapitated. And, but the dog, apparently the Bigfoot was run off by a dog team, by a sled dog team. Big animals, big dogs. Another one, a farmer apparently had a gun with him, but authorities blame wild dogs that tore the farmer up and the farmer uh, never got a shot off. That's pretty interesting. And you'll see that that reoccurs over and over again with hunters, especially with hunters with weapons. Forest ranger steps outside and sees a poacher, a, a person that he identified as a poacher previously hanging upside down and, and believe uh, was killed by a Bigfoot. And they, in that particular incident, I believe that was also Canada. And in that particular case, there was also large <clears throat> suspected Bigfoot tracks all, all around the cabin. And, and the fact the fact that this individual, this victim was hanging upside down uh, tells me something too, because earlier when I was talking to Grez off the air, uh, our next week's guest hopefully will be Richard uh, Soul. Richard Soul has, has written an interesting um, piece on the Knox Giga theory and a lot of Native Americans would know what that is, but he gets into he gets into the intricacies of Sasquatch behavior, such as the stick formations and the behavior aspects. But in the in the hour long hours long conversation I had with Richard earlier this week, um, when he comes on, we're going to talk about the mounds the ancient mounds found all across the United States and other places. And um, when he, uh, in his opinion, he 
um, suspects that that the mound builders were also what we call Sasquatch people today. When he mentioned that to me, I asked him, why is it in some of the reports that I've read about the, mine, the mound builder skeletons that were dug up by farmers in the latter, latter part of the, the century, why is it that some of these skeletons were facing east? Why that, why that direction of the compass? Why not west? Why not north? Why not south? Why east? And I ask him, I says, why have some of those skeletal remains been found uh, buried with their, with their arms crossed? What symbolic reason would they have to be buried like that? So I also get into, uh, I, also, I also want to get into the, the possibility with, with uh, Richard on, in Michigan's early uh, Sasquatch history, as far as I was able to go back into the uh, uh, 1700s, there is a, uh, there is a, a, a legend supposedly shared by the elders that said that the, the Ottawa, Potawatomi, and Ojibwa uh, came together in an alliance, and this might be as far back as the 1600s. Bluetooth disconnected. Very Bluetooth old. Connected. And uh, supposedly the alliance was drawn together by these three large groups in the Great Lakes to annihilate the prairie people. Now, uh, I've heard I've heard the term prairie people and forest people to 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 be synonymous, be the same thing. So why is it why is it that uh, there was a need to annihilate these people? And that's some of the questions that I have for Richard when he comes in. We'll get into a nice conversation over that. I think it's an interesting conversation because I joined an indigenous uh, clan tribe, 224,000 people, members, strong. And I was like, I'm going to talk about Sasquatch, and nobody would talk to me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, that was not the right approach. So because just like when we had Barry on the show, mm -hmm. he told you that we were moving too slow, but we were like, uh, <laughs> we uh, didn't know what to ask, and we wanted to be respectful because we didn't know what he could or could not answer mm -hmm. and he kept referring to us as white man mm -hmm. and we make full of ourselves out in woods wearing camo mm -hmm. that they know that we're there so uh yeah uh jeremiah says the sun also sets uh also the direction the sun rises so the council also their fires was the name so there's, you know, there's a lot of different uh, religious views. Uh, so, yeah. So, but, you know, the thing, though, is there's not a book. And Barry led on to, now, I'm not speaking for him or his tribe, mm -hmm. but did he or did he not mention that maybe there would be some, th some type of literature coming out in the near future to explain certain things? Yes, yes. Uh... Now that kind of caught me off guard right there. Mm -hmm. He's like I said before, Barry's Barry's a very well respected man. He's uh, highly respected among uh, his peers, and um, uh, if he says if he says that something may be coming out in the future, I would take that to the bank. What I've know of Barry. And some of the things that uh, that we've chatted about, um, that's that's all I know about it. You know, he he's uh, he's a man of his word, and and uh, so well, he also wanted to answer some of our questions, and he wanted to, but then he stopped himself. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, he, he was like, should I or should I not? And and it was like, you know, was it like, is it, is it the elders going to be disrespected or are we going to disrespect or is it going to be the people out in the audience going to be doing mm-hmm. things that we shouldn't do to disrespect the creatures mm-hmm. or however you want to call the animals or what they are, beings or whatnot, or however you want to label them. So, because yeah. they're very spiritual, remember, because he prays exactly. with them. Exactly. Yeah, he's very calculated in his responses uh, when it when it comes to that. But let me just add this: my partner, my police partner, for a long time uh, on the streets, on the roads, was Ojibwa. He was a dual. He had a dual citizenship: one of Canada and one of the United States. And when I approached him with with this question of Sasquatch and Bigfoot. Um, he took it back to his elders and they told him, uh-uh, stay out of that. Stay away from it. That's exactly what he said. And he brought it back to me. Uh, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't go into that. We don't talk about that. That was, that was the response that I got. He was very polite about it, but you know, they'll talk about this. They'll talk about that, but we're not going there. We're not talking about Sasquatches. Mm-mm. It's uh, very interesting. So um, to continue this list, uh, there was a hiker attacked and strangled uh, in the mountains. Um, And I believe this is Alaska also because it was identified as the Valdez Glacier. Um, Somebody said in the past that why is it that Alaska has violent Bigfoots? Now, I've heard people say that before, but um, I don't know. I don't know that I would go as far as equating that as any measurement because this happens, this happens all around. It, it happens in Kentucky, it happens in Tennessee, it happens in Michigan, New York. Massachusetts, Maine, um, Texas in particular. Um, but I don't know that I would, I would say that Alaska is the, the top 10 state for violence and stuff. I don't know. Um, so when I, when I was talking about the, the fire, uh, I got a little off track there, but I found that interesting because of the the anecdotal uh, report out of that missing 411 book that uh, mentioned a missing individual that was found with sand packed in his mouth and uh, his his clothes scorched. And uh, my knowledge of cloak and dagger stuff is that uh, some assassins would use ice rounds in other words, uh, a shell, if you can picture a shell, a bullet, but made of ice. And when it strikes a person, it does the damage and it melts and there's no evidence of the, of the uh, shell. That's the kind of uh, stuff that I've, I, I'm aware of. And down in Mexico in particular, they used, at one time they used hot Coca-Cola in the bottles. You, everybody remembers those bottles at one point, Coca-Cola. Yeah, they take the person, they took the person, flip them upside down, shake the bottle up, the hot Coca Cola, flip the top, and let it fizzle in his nose until it sizzles his brain. And that's the kind of deviousness that, that I see. But these are some of the things that some of the parallel things that um, that I see uh, in Bigfootery too. Yeah, I got a map up there, uh, Val. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know we can't see it very well. So I'm going to share the link with the audience. Uh, and it is a JPEG, and it's got different types of alleged Sasquatches. Uh, now, there is another map uh, or a photograph, and uh, you all can click on this in the YouTube link. It's, it's there. It's called Bigfoot411.com. 
but it shows you the branch and where they came from and, and the breaks down the different types because you know it, it goes to the old saying when i do something right no one remembers when i do something wrong no one forgets now that was my old lieutenant on county that's some of them, some of them are so back now. but that's in the past all right <laughs> ain't that right pal? <laughs> yeah, it is it is brother it i is. hated that red marker uh -huh. but anyways but yes but uh and we, i think and there's allegedly, and, and ladies and gentlemen, I got to fly in my studio. So if you see me get my shotgun out, be, just beware. Uh, but there's allegedly, I think, 12 to 15 different types of Sasquatches or Bigfoot that have been documented. And we're talking about the types of faces, the types of skin tones, uh, the thickness of the skin, uh, the eye sockets, the the brow, the the head shapes, the cones. So, you know, does each one represent something different? You know, I mean, yeah, yeah we do. Okay, we have good, we have evil in whatever species. You know, praying mantis, you have relations, and next you know, you're dead. You know, you get your head cut off. So, I mean, I have no idea. So, hair color, yes. Uh, hello there, Kelly, from Aussie land. Welcome from Australia. Uh, but, you know, there's so many different types, but a lot of things that happen out there in the community, and this is where Val's information comes so valuable because a lot of people don't report it. And that's the importance of it. And on top of that, and the reason why I say they don't report it, is because a it's covered up two they're afraid to report it and just like the girl that i'm seeing uh lives amongst them and it's like an everyday occurrence in val and uh you know she's a psychic medium right did i, did I ever tell you that my girl is we talk about that right i've never heard that before yeah so the girl i'm dating right here this girl right here to my right see her that's Sonia. Yeah. So she's a very, psychic medium. That's very pretty. And thank you. And uh, she is, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a love story in, in, in the making and how we met. But anyways, uh, she was sitting there last week, and Chris can tell you out in the audience, and she was like, it's getting ready to rain. And I'm like, okay. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, she's a psychic medium. And uh, she's like, it's getting ready to hail. And she leaned over and it started hailing and she took her phone. And I joke you not, Val, and went out to the window like this. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 And 40 feet right there was Sasquatch standing there. And she was like, oh, look at the beautiful storm. Look at the hail. I'm like, Sasquatch. Isn't it beautiful? Sasquatch. Oh, look at it. It's just so amazing. And I'm just like, she's like, I see it, honey. And I'm like, and it start doing this number behind a tree. And I'm like, hold the phone still. And she's showing me the hell. I don't want to see the damn hell, ladies and gentlemen, or the storm. So I can tell by looking at this thing that it was a female because of the bottom half of the body. It had some junk in the trunk, I guess you can say. And it was approximately seven feet tall. And she's like, yeah, that's one of my watchers. <laughs> you mean, you mean, she's like, yeah, she sits up here all the time. And she, it dawned on her the reason why that she was out there. Uh, the lightning, I guess, spooked her. But she collected eggs that morning and didn't leave none for her. So she was like, hello, what about some eggs? So, yes, Chris Hale. I know, right? And she was like, oh, look how beautiful it is. I'm, I'm trying to, like, get her attention. She's like, yeah, did you see it? I'm like, yeah, I saw it. Put it back. And then an hour later, I was not on the phone. She's like, oh, by the way, the alpha male showed up. I'm like, oh, great. How big was he? About eight or nine foot tall. And I'm like, great. So, yes. Isn't that hmm. wonderful, Val? I'd like to see the picture. Well, I, it was it was FaceTime 
on Facebook. Uh, oh. So we wasn't recording. We were like, you know, yeah. you know, videoing yeah. each other and yes. Love each other. Yes. So <laughs> but she she she'll tell you things before things will happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she did. Yes, Chris, I know. Because I cry I was texting Chris. I'm like, I'm looking at a Bigfoot right now. He's like, No, you're not. Yeah, I am. I was mm-hmm. like, it's not even 40 feet from her place, from her mm-hmm. house. Mm-hmm. So uh, can you get her on so we can ask her questions? Uh, she would love to come on right now. She's probably still in the creek babysitting. Uh, Smoochy boochies. Yes, Chris. <laughs> uh, video snuggling. Yeah, we do a lot of that. Uh, I don't even know what she's up to right now. Let me see. Uh, Jeremy, here's the updated schedule. Let me see. Let me actually text her. But yeah, she does. Uh, she's got stories that will blow your mind, Val. Mm-hmm uh with juveniles and stuff like that and uh, it's just like oh yeah it's no big deal so um let me see here look y'all got me so excited about seeing sasquatch so is she a uh, bigfoot researcher uh she don't have to research uh she's got them out there she's got i think she says uh probably about maybe 20. Mm -hmm. so Yes. And uh, she's got, uh, she's, we do shows together. Mm-hmm. Uh, we keep her location. Uh, she lives in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. We keep her location kind of quiet mm-hmm. because of certain reasons. And uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, she's got stories. That, it's pretty wild. I mean, it's just like, you know, Chris has heard them. Uh, Thomas. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, uh, when you see something and she's more worried about, look how beautiful the storm is, the hell. And I'm like, there's Sasquatch. Who cares about the storm? You know, she's probably going to rewatch this and probably get mad at me. But yes, uh, she tells you all about it. She does. Kelly Druce, welcome to the show. Uh, does she ever takes photos or hair samples for proof? Uh, she takes photos of the uh, footprints all the times. Uh, she used to do her garden. Uh, there's so much activity. Uh, she didn't even know what glyphs were until I introduced her to other people in the Sasquatch community because it was so normal to her. She didn't know what they were. And Chris is a Bigfoot researcher, and he can vouch. Uh, he's actually interviewed her and been on the show with her. Uh, so no other Bigfoot, not their feet. So. Uh, but she's got some wild stories, Val, that would just blow your mind. And everybody in the, in the community that lives around her knows they're there. And yes. they're okay. They're okay. Yes. With mm-hmm. Yes. And that's it's crazy. Kind of, that's kind of funny because I it it reminds me of a report from a uh, news carrier or letter carrier postal service who was parked alongside of a road, a road someplace in the United States. And she sent a, I don't know, she was on the phone quickly for a quick message to the babysitter or relative or somebody. Again, just as in your case, she was on, she was FaceTiming. And apparently there was a Sasquatch at the tree line right behind her. (laughs) <laughs> and the other person on the other end of the line started freaking out and and uh, going hysterical. And then um, when the message came across that they're, look behind you, look behind you in the tri- tree line. Apparently the, the letter carrier did. And uh, I can only imagine that, that little uh, four-wheeler uh bus that they drive that little truck that they drive just sped away i mean it couldn't get away fast enough from that tree line but yeah it 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 uh sounds very very familiar you know what you don't know you see so kelly yeah she can get you any proof she wants that's if you want hair she can get you hair uh she can probably get your feces uh she can get you uh, uh print samples uh, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, she just, she was raised with them and everybody knows all about it. And this is something that's normal for people that live out in the country. 
Uh, now, out her front door, she's got a beautiful creek that runs through her front property. And down through her property goes to a big lake to where if it rains, you can get on the inner tube and ride all the way down to the lake. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, I know it's hard to fathom to understand uh, when you hear stuff like this. Uh, uh, any reason why she has not done this or for anyone else? Uh, she's very protective of them like everybody else that I've ever interviewed that actually has them on their property. Um, her friends um, will not come over to the house because of what they've seen. Uh, a select few will. Uh, some will not spend the night mm -hmm. uh, because of what has happened. And uh, just like the peanut butter guy, yeah, Chris. Uh, but, you know, Kelly, it's, it's, it's very... <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, and Val, I will have her on the show. And Kelly, you can ask her any question, any questions you want. And uh, she's very honest. She's very sincere. And she does not think anything of it. And she will walk out in the middle of the woods at night by herself with these creatures and, and sit up against a tree and watch them come up to her with eye shot. White eye shine, gold eye shine, red eye shine, green eye shine, blue eye shine. And she will tell you this stuff. And she will also tell you about one of the juvenile. Yes, with no flashlight, Chris. That is that is correct. Now, me, I would have an AK-47, a 12-gauge shotgun with some slugs and some holy water, some crucifixes, and no telling whatever else. But. Uh, but if we can understand them, we can leave them. But you can always find people that always want to do bad things. But here's the thing, Kelly, is that we know these things exist. We know these things can cloak. We have video evidence they can. And Thursday, uh, coming up on uh, Open the Door at 5 p.m. with Barb Hartman and myself, uh, Barb Shoup has actually caught one uh, cloaking on an iPod 4. And uh, it has been debunked, and this is an iPod 4. It has been debunked, uh, tried to, with Hollywood tech people. They took the thing to... I mean, it's just, it's just wild. So, but just like Barry said, is that white man is going with this process of an investigating the wrong way. That's why they're not seeing what they want to see. And that's why we're having people that search the woods for 20 or 30 or 40 years and never seen one. And then we have other people like the guy, Val, what was his name with the peanut butter jars? Ryan Barber. Yes. That would give six of these big tubs of peanut butter jars a week to these Sasquatches. And then he got sick and all hell breaks loose. And now they're banging on people's houses. Right, give me some food. Hey! You know, and now the DNR is called Fish and Wildlife. And they're setting up trail cameras to figure out who this, you know, guy is doing all this. And they would never would call it a Bigfoot or Sasquatch. No. They call it bears. Bear. But, yeah, you know, Kelly. So, you know, we'd love to talk about this stuff. But, but you know, the, the funny part about this is, is that for the few houses that are around that location where Brian was at, if you in your mind can picture a bear running up to a house, throwing empty peanut butter plastic jars on people's property, then running up to the house and pounding on the house with claws, it doesn't make any sense. But it got so bad, apparently, uh, for the DNR to step in, in Michigan, to step in and um, kindly ask this gentleman to stop doing that because you're upsetting the They were going to hammer him. They were going to hammer him from trespassing. They were going to hammer him from littering. Now, this guy was smart. He labeled the bottom of the jars with dates and the top of the jars with dates. 
And he would get the ones with the lids that were on with the right dates, and he would get the lids with the wrong dates on the wrong jars. Not only that, he left the foal on top of the peanut butter, and they would roll back the foal. And he said that these peanut butter jars, he got hair out of it, mm-hmm. that, that were so clean, Kelly, that he tried to put one in the dishwasher and could not replicate the cleanliness. That's how much, whether they licked it, I have no idea. They must have a big tongue. I have no idea. Because the only thing I can picture is a dog with the dog tongue thingy. You know, when you give those dogs those things full of peanut butter. But I'm just saying, Kelly. And Kelly says, yeah, but she's living with them and others live with them with education is great. Maybe if people share how to research correctly, that would be great. But the problem is, is that people don't respect things and that's what barry was trying to explain to people on the show Mm -hmm. and that was one of the things that why he kept saying white man you know we ruined a lot of things when we came to america uh i mean we kicked we kicked their ass and we took their land i mean come on and we disrespected them. We disrespected their ancestry. We disrespected their disrespected their history. You know their elders uh, and everything else. So you know, it's. I wish Kelly, it was as easy as what we were talking about. Uh, she is in fear of things happening to them. Uh, Yes, could you get DNA from jar? Absolutely. We do have DNA. Uh, Chris can talk about the DNA. Uh, we do have hair from Sasquatch, allegedly hair. So, uh, yes, it's 98% human and 2% unknown. So, yes, the evidence is out there, Kelly. It is. But it's always coming back. It's, it's been contaminated. Now, Val and I know how to collect evidence. Now, I don't know about Val, but I had to before being, you know, a captain of detectives or even being a detective, how to demonstrate how to either a, in a court of law, collect evidence and how to uh, re-examine evidence and how to reseal evidence in front of a jury to make sure that they knew that you knew what you were doing because they could get you to get you wrong and say you did it wrong, you contaminated it. Mm -hmm. And certain things with DNA, you had to collect it with not plastic, but paper because it's a living, breathable tissue and so forth. There's a a lot of steps Mm -hmm. and there is a lot of science killing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I totally agree with you. now, she promised me that I can go out to her property <clears throat> and I would not be get eaten alive. Now, I don't know that because she has, you know, a relationship with them. Now, me being a male and they can smell pheromones, right? So in her, the cycle of the month, you know, we're just saying deer and heat and animals and spring. I mean, would that make some of them mad? I don't know. So I don't know what could happen. Uh, Chris states, David Plotty has collected over 50 samples of hair, uh, not identifiable by any other animal. Yes, DNA samples come back human on mother's side, nuclear DNA, a known and genome database. So yes, uh, the father's side. So the evidence is out there. Now, I know from experience, from dealing with fish and wildlife from Kentucky and DNR from Indiana, uh, most of the time when people would get evidence, uh, they would be like, hey, man, I got some evidence. Can you get this tested? Like, sure. And as soon as they walked out the door, right in the trash can. Mm -hmm. They didn't want no part of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I forgot what's that, what do they call that file? I forgot the term of it, Chris. What's it called when they file it? It's a, it's a nickname or a slang they use. 74 it or 68 it or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, uh, Kelly, is there any reason why no one has got a clear photo one? Yeah, so Kelly, so here is a lot of reasons. 
um, that are allegedly. Now, I have over 29 trail cam, foul 13. Thank you, Chris. That means trash. Um, we know for a couple of reasons that we think that these creatures, Sasquatches, Bigfoot, uh, they are a higher frequency. They vibe on a, a higher frequency that we can. Um, they have the ability to uh, master camouflage, whether it's from their hair. Uh, Kelly, to ask you a quick question while I'm talking, what color is a polar bear? That This is not a trick question. I'm just seeing if you know, uh, but what color is a polar, polar bear? So... Uh, but while you answer that, um, so a uh, few and I are out in the field and, uh, and I bring out, and this is just one of my cameras and I bring out one of these cameras right here. Okay. And these, these are just one of my cameras that I use. Now this does everything automatic. This does the shutter speed, the aperture speed, everything, right? So does the sun rise and set? Well, yeah, but the question is, what color is a polar bear? Because a lot of people get this wrong. So uh, you and I may see something at 60 yards in a bush, right? Now I'll bring up my camera and I'll take a picture. Now, when I take that picture, that shutter speed, aperture speed, and everything else, the way that sun lighting is, we may not be able to get what we saw by our eyes, right? So the electronics is automatically trying to focus. Now we know for some reason that they can interfere with electronics. They can manipulate distortion. They can drain batteries. How? I don't know. It's proven. Uh, we know that they can see infrared. Uh, Hey, what you doing? There we go. Hey, can you do it? Can you jump on a show real quick? Huh? Can you jump on a show real quick? Uh, yeah, I guess so. All right, I'll send you a link, baby. Love you. Love you. All right, bye. So uh, we know that they can actually uh, manipulate electronics. So uh, they can also see infrared on... Um, floodlights, uh, trail cams, so they stay away from them. So it's very interesting on how they do that and how they see in the spectrum guide. So now this is all allegedly, okay? So we really don't know because we don't have an eyeball and we can actually go back and see things. So uh, what I've been telling people when a lot of people's been doing like the Patterson and Gilbert film is that they would they use an old wind up camera, right? And that's why they got a good picture of the patty film. Now they did not show the whole patty film. There was other things that was out there uh, during that process uh, while she was walking away to distract them from the juveniles, because, like I said, they didn't show you the whole the whole video. And that was very important to know because they only showed you the clip as she was walking away. Now, we can talk about the muscles and the breast and everything like that. I'm sending her the link right now, uh, Kelly, so you, you can actually talk to her. And uh, But a lot of people are going back right now to older technology, uh, 110 film and so forth. Uh, because they're having better results capturing better uh, pictures of Sasquatch and Bigfoot. Uh, same thing with Dogman. So uh, it's interesting because they will actually put sticks in front of the trail cams and wave them back and forth. They will take trail cams and remove them. They will walk around the area of the trail cams. Uh, we have uh, now, I also do paranormal, so I ghost hunt too, right? So we have tape recorders. Now, I have different mini makes and models of digital recorders. Mm -hmm. Now, Kelly, Barb Shoot will tell you that uh, she is actually, here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Sonia, welcome to the show. 
Hi. There, there's my baby. So uh, I was telling them about, look how beautiful the hell is. And then <laughs> everything. So uh, Val, this is Sonia. Sonia, this Hi, is Val. Sonia. Hello. Uh, well, tell them a little yeah. briefly about your situation you got out there where you live. Um, well, I have a family of Bigfoots that live out here on my property. And yeah, it's pretty cool. They're pretty. Um, <laughs> I've got all kinds of critters here. Um, I'm babysitting my nephew, too. So he caught me right in the middle of that. But yeah, I have a family of Bigfoots that live out here. And they're pretty. Um. Uh, what do you call it? Like, um, I'm having brain fog. You have to, I have to apologize. They're very um, active, you know, around my house a lot. So um, I'm very interactive with, with them. I have a pretty good bond, I, I would say, with them. Um, there's probably uh, about 15 of them in the family. Yeah, I've seen most of them, I believe. I think I've seen all of them. I can't so, see most of them, but you never know. Are, are you able to call them in? Yeah. Like, you, you know, what's funny? That, yeah, you know, what, what's so weird about it is that that's what started it. That's what mm -hmm. started them as really knowing that we're here. And my sister makes animal impressions. She's really good at like just regular animal impressions. Uh, but when I was like 12 and she's a little bit older than me, um, she called she called one in one summer mm -hmm. and it would stand outside of our windows out here and just scream. Mm -hmm. And the, the mm -hmm. scream that it made sounded between like a dying jackrabbit and a I just got home. Uh, it sounded like a dying jackrabbit and a holler monkey or, you know, mm -hmm. like mixed together. Like it was just mm -hmm. the wildest thing, you know, and uh, we'd always like our family always believed in Bigfoot. My dad had had some weird experiences in the woods and my great grandmother or my great grandmother, on my mom's side would talk about the big gray thing here in East Tennessee. And they she would, you know, it would sit down and eat apples with them by the creek. And then um, and then my other aunt, my dad's actual aunt. um. She, everybody thought she was crazy because she eat dirt, but she talked about the big gray thing eating out of her garden all the time. So, you know, my dad always knew that there was these things around and that like one summer when I was like, when I was 12 years old, um, my sister would go outside and we, we spent the summers outside all the time and she would just make these weird noises, you know, these weird calls, these weird like hollers and stuff. And that's what drawed the Bigfoots into our, um, into, well, it not drawed them here. They were already here but draw them to this place specifically or, or made us draw it drawed us to them. Let's put it that way. And, you know, uh, we went after it several times and it, we could, you know, we, it, we never could see it. You know, it would walk away from us like on two feet. You, you, you could hear it walking away. Like the first time we ever went after it was that first night it started screaming and it screamed all the way to the, like, it, like we were standing right in front of it, but there was nothing there. And, we had a flashlight. We had one of those, like at the time was like one of those high lumen, you know, flashlights or spotlights, you know, handheld. Mm -hmm. And my dad's like, you know, I got this for just such an occasion. I was like, you think some screaming in the woods? He's well, not this occasion. He said, just to be able to see through the woods mm -hmm. and whatever it was, like I said, it sounded like it was screaming right in our faces, but nothing was there. When I retired, when I retired, I uh, spent a week, at a uh, bed and breakfast down there in East Tennessee. And um, we had to drive up into the mountains to, uh, you know, spend the night and stuff. And uh, I smelled a Bigfoot there and they smell the same way they do in Tennessee as they do in Michigan, but I could not see it, but there were some cattle around. But my point is, um, uh, you know, yeah, Tennessee is 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 the place for me. Um, but what I was going to ask is, uh, can you call one in to the back of the trees there, to the tree line? Hi, hi. Sorry, my dog. I can't do it. Go. I was not prepared for this. Um, what did you have? Did can you, can you call? Can you call one in to the back of the tree lane there while you're on the phone? Like, could I call one in right now? No. Probably not because my sister and her, or my sister's boyfriend and his friends are putting up a goat fence. So oh, okay. there's strangers on the property right now. Yeah, like, goat, you know, goat. It would be difficult for me to know whether or not they would come or not. Like, mm -hmm. 
I'm like, I don't much call them in during the day. That's more like my sister and the kids' thing. Because mm -hmm. I kind of like let them be, you know, and I don't like, not, I, 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 when I communicate with them is mostly at night because I'm a night owl. Mm -hmm. And somebody's shooting up a storm out here, just gunshots ringing out of nowhere. I don't know where it's coming from and it's got me all, and the dogs are barking and everything else. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, so somebody's bringing off gunshots right now and i don't know where it's coming from so that concerns me mm -hmm. it's probably one of my neighbors because it sounded like target practice not somebody trying to shoot something mm -hmm. but i was telling them about the storm and the hell and tell them about the watchers oh yeah like well hold on i can turn so in this part right here mm -hmm. right there in the top is like this part right here mm -hmm. is like where the watchers they'll sit there during the day because I've come up on spots where um, where it looks like something has just sat there and took sticks and broke them in half. And there'll be a whole pile of like little twigs all broken in half just oh, the yeah. same. Sounds familiar. And, yeah. And then the bark, you know, they're like <laughs> pieces of bark off the tree. Mm -hmm. It's my nephew. Every time my nephew comes back into the yard, my dogs start barking. I apologize. Um, it's not like he wasn't just standing right here. I don't know what the problem is. But like... um. Yeah, and the bark off the trees, it'll sit there and peel just little bitty slithers. So they'll be like, you know, it looks like nesting material almost, you know. So it just piles up and they sit back there. And the one that sits back there, she's usually the same one who sits back there daily. You know, she's always there. Um, she's usually always there during the day unless the family's out somewhere else, you know. But she, um, she's the one that Chris saw the other day. She, she sits up there in the corner and you know, uh, I had realized that I had been feeding them eggs recently. It's just it's something I hadn't thought about doing. But we had like every time we go to get eggs from the chickens, we get like 40 eggs a piece. So it's been a nice treat for them to have. Um, so I've been giving them eggs. So the other day, right before the storm, I was like, I should go feed the chickens and get the eggs before it starts storming. Because Lord knows I'm not going to do it after it starts storming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I like I got up and went out there and got like two bucketfuls like of eggs and had come in and I was sitting there in the bed and and I I told Grizzly I was like yeah it's start, it's going it's going to storm soon I just I just know it is and and I was like you know what it's going to start hailing like I know it's about to it's about to hail it's about to drop ship and hail I just know it I could feel the pressure change I could I could mm -hmm. feel it or smell it almost I don't know how to describe it but I was like, it's about to hail. So I crawled over to my window and I was like, I was sitting there and I, he was watching me and I was like, uh, just sitting there and I like all of a sudden it started hailing and I was like, Oh, it started hailing. And I flipped my phone around like this, you know, and was like, I was like, yeah, look, you know, I was like, it started to hail. I was like, I knew I'd be right. You know, I'm never wrong. So of course I'd be right. <laughs> but, but, uh, when I flipped my camera back around, uh, when I flip my camera back around, uh, the same time I flip my camera back around, it, it like this jolt of lightning went through the sky. It was really beautiful. But about that time, the watcher that comes out, that she had already walked down. I thought I'd seen her come down, but I wasn't sure because I wasn't paying much attention because I don't a lot. Like I don't think, I just don't think about them because they're always there. So I, it's just no big deal. So I thought she'd come down a little bit, but I was watching the storm. So when I flipped my camera around and that lightning had hit, she jumped out from behind the tree. She was all like, but the, when she she jolted out and was just like, Ugh. like it, like I don't know if hail hit her or if the lightning frightened her or what. But she jumped out from behind the tree, and Grizzly was like, "Look, look, did you see that?" And I was like, "Did you see that?" And he goes, "Did you see that?" And I said, "Did you see that?" He said, "There was a Bigfoot." And I said, "Yeah, I know. Did you see the lightning? It was really pretty." He's like, "No." He's like, "But there was the Bigfoot," and I was like, "Yeah, she's that's the watcher. She's always there." I said, "But did you see the lightning?" Because when it came down, it came in like a, a spork, you it know. Was beautiful. It was like, the lightning was beautiful, Grizzly. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the lightning. It was pretty, though. <laughs> well, I've, I've seen her before. But I made it freaked her out that I, she realized I had a camera in my hand or something. I don't know. But she stayed for a minute. And, you know, she came up from behind the tree. And Chris got a good look at her. And she weaved and bobbed and went back into the woods. Went back up there. Well, I think she wanted eggs. I think she came down and was like, yo, you didn't feed me no eggs. I think she saw me crawl to my window. And it's like, I'm going to go down there and tell her that I didn't get no eggs. Well, I saw you with all those eggs a minute ago. You know, she watches me get them all out of the chicken coop. So she had to have known. 
Sonia, <laughs> are these free free range chickens or are they in a no. coop? Cooped up? They're in a coop. Yeah. So have you had any chickens disappear? Um, not from my family of Sasquatches. Now there is a yeah. single yes. Tell them yeah, the story. There's a single baby. male. There's a single male that roams around about uh, March, February, somewhere in that time, and he's by himself. And the rest of the family is gone wherever mm -hmm. they go through the winter. You know, they go up in the mountains when it gets real cold, which people think that that don't make no sense. Well, it does for them. <laughs> mm -hmm. But there's a single male. He smells different. He's a different color. He's like a different build than the rest of them. And he smells like burnt coffee and skunk. Like, mm -hmm. and it's overpowering. You know, for sure when he is out, you, you just, you know, it. the whole hauler smells like him. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing else that smells like that. People think it's a skunk, but not even the skunk on its worst days smells like this. Mm -hmm. And he's, um, the first time he came around, I wasn't sure about him because like he was strange. I'd never seen him before. You know, I don't know how Bigfoot's, receive guest you know so as far as i'm concerned if another bigfoot's on the property they have to be some sort of guest of these you know or maybe you know is, is my like just in my in my own perfect world is the stories i'm making up in my head <laughs> like um but um no some of the things that you're you're saying correlate with what i found in in my research by the way i i'm a data miner yeah, I watched your show. I watched your show the first time, well, like a couple of weeks ago or whenever. Yeah. I watched um, one of your shows. And then I think you were on a show that I was on not too long ago. I think you were on a show with me. I don't remember, but I feel like you were. Or I was in the audience. I don't know. Val, you got to listen to this story about this juvenile. Mm -hmm. This will crack you up because mm -hmm. she got mad and she was like, I am going to get you. But anyways, go ahead. What are you about? Like when the juveniles, when they came into my garden? No. Or when, when the, oh, the juveniles, when they got in trouble? No, the chicken coop. Well, God, that's not, it wasn't a juvenile. That's the single male that roams around by himself. He comes in about March or February and my sister's boyfriend came to me and he was like, hey, something's in your chicken coop. And I, I was like, you know, like, it's weird too, because, you know, not much messes with the chickens during when it's really cold. You know, they're usually, they got, they got their boxes to go in and they're not usually out. You don't usually hear them. So something was disturbing the chickens and he, my, I can get my nephew. Where are you going? Come here. Um, I can't walk and talk, obviously. Um, he was like, something was trying to get in your chicken coop last night. He said, I don't know what it was, but it tried to rip the whole door off. Mm. And I built like this chicken. It was a chicken tractor and it, it was made out of real wood, like really good real wood. It was heavy, like, mm. like, you know, just a, 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 a normal adult would have trouble just like lifting the lid and holding it up. You know what I mean? Like it was pretty heavy, heavy, heavy duty or whatever, but something had got it and ripped the hinges off the chicken, off the door. And I was like, cause it busted the wood all up and everything. I was like, I'm going to have a hell of a time, like having to fix that. And I was like, you know, I was like, I had a feeling that I knew what it was. So I followed, I, I went back into the woods and I found like, cause one of my chickens did go missing mm -hmm. and, um, I found the feathers and I found a footprint and I was like, yeah, okay. I was like, I was pretty sure he was back and cause he had come, he had come around a couple of years before and I think we had cats go missing or something else go missing. And it was that same time of year. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just, I just knew it was him. Like it just, I had a feeling it was that smell. It was just everything. So that next night I was like, I'm going to get him tonight. So I left my back porch light or my floodlight, you know, I had it set. So when I stepped out my back door, the floodlight would come on and it would light up the whole back area where the chickens were. I'm not going to be ashamed to admit that I drug my chicken tractor closer to the woods. <laughs> so I would make sure that, you know, they would, he would come back. And sure enough, about the same time that Tom told me they were, he was messing with them the night before because he got one of them. And so he, he, he knew he could come back and do it again. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I heard the chickens and I was like, all right, Joe's on. And I grabbed my gun and I stepped out the back door and I had a friend with me. She stepped out back with me. As soon as we stepped out, he was standing there with the chicken tractor door ripped off again, standing in there, like reaching in for a chicken. And, he, and I said, I got you. And he was like, I said, I got you. And about that time, he just dropped the thing. It's like 
and stepped back into the woods. And my friend, before I said anything, she goes, oh, my God, do you see that? She goes, it's Bigfoot. Do you see that? I was like, yeah. She was like, no, it's Bigfoot. I was like, yeah. He, when he stepped back into the woods, I'll tell you exactly where you stepped back in. This cedar tree right here, where these cedar trees are. I don't know how good you can see, but there's cedar trees right here. Yeah. That's where he stepped. He stepped right back into them and disappeared. But like, I could still see him. Like, like we know when you blink a lot and your eyes start to focus and stuff, mm -hmm. you could still see his outline. Like he was cloaked. You know, I didn't know much about the cloaking though. I've seen it before. I just, you know, I'm a big, I'm scared of predators. It's always been my favorite alien, but you know, mm -hmm. it was kind of the same thing, but you could still see him standing there. Like I knew he was there, but he was just, it was like, he was gone. Mm -hmm. But I was like, yeah, but what? I finally went out there and told him that he couldn't have my chickens. He couldn't be messing with my stuff. And I went out and, um, like, I, I think I, I don't remember if I, I didn't leave him gifts yet, but the next night out, that was the same year I grilled Brussels sprouts for the first time. So proud of myself. They were beautiful. I was so excited. Um, yeah. So after the chicken and I wouldn't let him have the chicken that night, he came back and got in my garden and stood in my garden and ate every one of my Brussels sprouts. Cause I know I stood up there like, you know, he hawing myself like, Oh, look at a good job. What I did. Cause I would talk to my plants and stuff. Also yeah. I'd sing to them and stuff. <laughs> But like, I know he was watching me and I was so proud of him and I know he knew that. And then I ruined his chicken dinner and then I screamed at him and told him he couldn't have no more chickens. And then I didn't leave him nothing to eat. So he came over and ate my Brussels sprouts. So we had to like, I had to start leaving because at that time, my family of Bigfoot isn't around that often mm -hmm. or isn't around, you know, like during those, those months. So I'm oh, sorry. I have to give my nephew. Don't drink that. That's gross. I don't. Um, but yeah, so I had to start leaving him gifts. That was something that I had to start doing. I had to start, you know, thinking about him. <laughs> so I started leaving him gifts and he, after that, he hasn't messed with anything since. Well, what I find interesting is the residents that are around your property year round yeah. have not interceded and, and, uh, run him off because that seems to be that seems to be the typical practice of a lot of uh, resident and uh, um, nomads. You know, yeah. the individuals that that travel seasonally, seasonally uh, through areas and stuff. They're not yeah. tolerated by by you know the alpha of the group in that area, unless and yeah, even and, and if they cause problems and stuff. They don't want problems coming back on them. They take care of it. They handle right. their business. Which, well, which you is know, remarkable. what's weird about the place. Yeah. Um, about the same time, like I had a wampus cat encounter. There is a tall six foot like cat like creature that roams the woods out here. And she is very much real. And when I saw her, it was the same time of year that that other Sasquatch comes through same time of year. And, um, she stayed longer than he, he stays because he just comes through. He's here for a few days and gone, you know, and, and you just know when he's around, he gets everything in the hauler tore up. But the Wampus Cat, I saw her during February or March, the same time that I seen, you know, that he comes around. So I think that's kind of odd because I know my family Sasquatches aren't out here. There's no activity, nothing new, you know. I just, I don't. I, I know it sounds weird. I can, I don't, I don't feel them. I feel them when they're around. I know that when they're there and I, I don't feel them when, at this time of year. So wherever they go, I don't think they're in this line of woods, but I think a lot of things traveled the paths that are out here because this property in itself has something special about it. It just is something about it. I can't, I can't exactly explain it into words, but I also believe there's a portal out here. I find all kinds of weird stuff just in, just in weird places and just um, I've seen so much stuff out here that it just, I, I, you know, I'm more, I just think there's a portal out here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, Val, you remember what Barry said, the Indian guy about the juvenile acting goofy. Yeah. Now, Sonia mm -hmm. explained to him about the girl that was having uh, problems <laughs> with uh, her partner. Yeah, so like I have a friend out here and we were cleaning out my car. And as we were cleaning out my car, it was just like right here. And 
as we was cleaning out my car, she was crying because her, her girlfriend broke up with her. Um, she was uh, like, she was just really upset and she'd just been crying. And we were talking back and forth and cleaning out my car and just crying. It was nighttime. And she comes, she had been around. She knows about the Bigfoot. She knew about the Bigfoots before then. Um, she had uh, like, uh, she would go out and feed my pigs with me and they would fo- they follow like when we go out in the woods, they follow a lot of the time they'll follow with you. So they'll just walk with you. And when you step, they step kind of stuff. So she knows about them. She's never had seen one face to face, but she definitely knew they were there. Um, but we're out there and she's crying and going on and she started crying and something starts making fun of her crying. Mm-hmm. And she's like, what? <laughs> she was like, she was just crying. I was like, do you hear that? And she was like, what is it? And she was just like over boohoo and, and it was mocking her. Mm-hmm. And as it started to mock her, I said, I think the Sasquatch. <laughs> my nephew having a moment. So like, I was like, I think it's mocking you. I think, I think it's making fun of you. And she realizes that it is like making fun of her. It's making the same noises that she's over like, you know, having a panic attack, <laughs> you know, she, like it's making fun of her do that. Mm-hmm. And when she realizes she starts doing that laugh cry thing where you don't know whether you're laughing or you're crying, mm-hmm. you're just making God awful noises and it starts mocking her doing that. And it's, I'm dying laughing. Like, cause it's just so funny because I, it, I knew that's what they were doing. I knew they were making fun of her, but about the time I said that, like my car was parked right here and the bridge is right here. So about that time, all my dogs kind of like, like stepped back and was like, oh, what's that? And my little three pound chihuahua was like, oh, no, I got it. She starts running towards the bridge, full speed run, barking. The only one, I don't know why. What, do you see one? No, sorry, no. Oh. It was working on my brakes. <laughs> <laughs> where the socket set was and I was like I don't I don't know what I did with it um okay so so it um so as my three pound chihuahua started running towards the bridge something like it was not something but Bigfoot like and what's so funny it was like one of the older males like the old like like I think it was the the, the I think it was the alpha male doing it because he was always out there when she was out there. I don't know, like, I don't know. Anytime that my friend, my, that one friend that was here, he was out there. I don't know if it was just her vibes or something, but he was the one that was making fun of her. I know it was him, but I think it was him that come across the bridge and he had his arms up like, ooh, 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 and was scruffing his feet and running and like coming across the bridge at us. And I had never had one do that like towards me and just let me have like me and a friend have just open view of him. But you could tell that it was just a playful, like, like moment, like, you know, where he was just like, hoo, hoo, hoo. and my, my one, my three pounds uh, thought she was going to take on Sasquatch. She was like, she, she never like, she never gave up pursuit. Like I had to run down there and grab her, you know? And my friend was like, I can't believe you run towards the thing. I said, I didn't run towards the Bigfoot. I run towards Ivy. She just happened to be that direction. You know, I wasn't going to. You never know. You never know. Like, I just, I'm not, I don't take my dogs out in the woods when I go out there to gift and stuff a lot of the time, you know, at night. I do during the day. They follow me out there during the day, but I don't know if one of them might punt one of my dogs for, you know, for barking. I don't know. You know, we have a bond, but I, I really don't think they would, but you never know. So, <laughs> take no dogs alert you when they're around? <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come on. Come on, we'll go get something to drink. I'm sorry. Come on. Sonia, do your dogs alert you when they're around? Um, so I know by the way the dogs sniff the air. I mean, they don't have to let me know that they're around. Like, I already know, but like, it's they know when they're around by the way they sniff the air. And that's the only way I can describe that. Like, the, they, they'll do this thing where they, you know, just inhale. And yeah, so and they never bark when the, the when the Sasquatches are out in the woods, you know, messing around. They don't bark at them. They just go straight into the woods. No bark. Mm-hmm. Hold on a second. 
Isn't this crazy? Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> But a lot of things that she said, I see repeated over and over again in, in a lot of these reports by witnesses of the same thing. The chicken coops, the uh, the mimicking, uh, the interaction, um, a lot of that is repeated over and over again. She mentioned about the watchers, the sentinels, where they sit yes. and watch at their favorite spot. That's not the first time I've heard uh, or read uh, reports of, of property owners pointing out different locations in the woods, especially around residences, where these things have, have taken up position. And, and what do they do to, to break the boredom? Think about that. If you're sitting there for hours and hours and hours watching a house, you sit and find sticks and you break them. In a lot of these instances, um, uh, they find footprints around these spots where the grass is trampled down. It looks like an obvious um, vantage point. And if people, I don't, I live in the city, so I have no sas Sasquatches walking down this, the sidewalk here. It's a lot of traffic, a lot of people. But for those that live in rural areas where there are a lot of woods and stuff like that, places to hide, take a walk around your property and look and, and try to figure out if I were somebody watching this property, where would I stand and have the best vantage point? And there might not be just one of them. There might be several of them around the property. But it's very Okay, I was listening to what you said. And yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, um, there. What's weird about the spots, like where you stand, where they stand, even where the watcher mm -hmm. is, like during the day, they don't move much during the day, so they just mm -hmm. kind of watch. But if you go to where they stand at, where their most active spots are at night, and like you look at the one spot, you can follow that spot to that spot. When you get to that spot, you can follow that spot to the next spot, and you can follow the next spot to the next spot. Mm -hmm. I've never followed it all the way up. I've never. I feel like they've left me signs and they've invited me. Like I've never like, I've never went that way to uh, up the mountain all the way up it. Oh, so, but, you okay, know, so you're, you're, living, you're living right next to the Appalachian mountains there. The great. Oh yeah. State. I live in them. Yeah. I'm in a, I'm in the clinch mountain system and log mountain. Yeah. Um, don't, don't identify your, your specific area. Oh so. yeah. Sorry. No. Just, um, but the, there's a place up there. There's like a, there's land up there that like the neighbors that they, they talked about when they've always talked about and the older people like talk about, that's a place that you don't go. Mm -hmm. And that's what they call it. It's like the place that you, <laughs> that you don't go. And every time that they've ever been in the woods up that way, um, strange things will happen. Like mm -hmm. just really weird stuff. A lot of people won't talk about what happened to them. Mm -hmm. um, there's a really weird spring up there. I don't know. Why is how it to weird? Describe that. Like, Why is it weird? <laughs> um, just um, like I don't know how to describe it. It's just the energy there. It's just mm -hmm. uh, like when you're there, there's no birds, no mm -hmm. squirrels, mm -hmm. no other wildlife. Just kind of the spring there, and that's about it. You know, so it's kind of like one of those things where it just seems off. Where it seems like something. You know, it's weird not to. Be, it's being in the woods in the middle of the springtime or summertime, and it and it be. You know, you're not being able to hear like birds or squirrels or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Now, she does have her windows covered because somebody said about peeping in. Yeah, so her windows are covered. But going to I mean, the bathroom. they're covered at night because at nighttime, I have my lights on in my room and I can't see out the window into the mm -hmm. dark. But mm -hmm. things can see in and mm -hmm. I just... You know. Tell him about tell tell Val about the restroom. Oh yeah, like and so, especially like growing up, they don't do as much anymore. Or maybe I've just gotten used to it. But uh, when we were growing up, like you could you could go and sit in the bathroom, and like there's the, the windows right behind the toilet. So if you open the window, which we always did back in the summer, you know, like the windows would be open. Um, you could sit there and pee, and you could hear something walk up to the window, and then sit there and just breathe. Uh, and that's uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
No. Yeah. no. It is that's one not, of those cool. things that is very, very um, nerve wracking because I know what it is. I know what it is now. Even now, it would still bother me. It would still, <laughs> it still freak me out. So, Kelly, Kelly, are you still here? Here's your chance, Kelly. I know you had some questions for my dear old Sonia. So ask away, Kelly, uh, if you're still in, in here. Kelly Druce, this is your chance. I know uh, go, 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 go. some questions answered. Hopefully we answered them. But it's really interesting because, like I was telling them, Sonia, is that everybody in your area knows about them. Yeah, it's most not people. like a big secret. Yeah, most people like, you know, there's some old people up here. They is like, oh, like one guy calls them like the bears that throw rocks. Mm -hmm. Well, we all know it wasn't a bear. We know what it is, but that's what he wants to call them. And that's fine. Bears. You know, <laughs> the bears that throw rocks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Oh. You know, uh, some people just don't want to believe and some people don't know what to believe. And some people just so don't you, get yeah. a good enough eye view to make a good judgment and don't want to. So crazy. You feel uncomfortable with them peeping in the windows? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but they don't do it that much. Like uh -huh. the last thing that messed up my window was the wampus cat, and mm -hmm. that was just a couple years ago. And I know it was her. Isn't Tennessee close? To that, Sonia, isn't Tennessee close to that military uh, governmental <laughs> secret uh, location there, wherever it is, close to uh, Gatlinburg? Like, well, like, like what, like where the Oak Ridge and stuff is? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, we're right are over there, the left from them. Are there signs all around that place inviting the public to step in here at your own will, at your own risk, and like where at Oak Ridge? Yeah, or, yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't do much. I used to. So I used to. My uncle used to talk about like <laughs> um, his friend that worked at, they used to pick up a lot of animals with extra legs out there um, and all kinds of mutations. So I don't go out in the woods in Oak Ridge. The energy's off. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy. It doesn't feel right. So I don't do much. Negative. Yeah. Just <laughs> negative feelings. Um, so, so. Give me a cup. I just wonder, I would just wonder what they unleash out there to wander around do what here what at my house no at oak ridge i think that's what we were talking about oh right yeah oh yeah yeah i'll that's what i would I'm... say no because there's a lot of places out there that you can't go mm -hmm. there's a lot of places you can go but yeah it's, uh... I don't know, some of the animal deformities that they've had and they've picked up it's just it, it creeps me out <laughs> mm -hmm. I got enough problems. <laughs> I don't need more. Uh, it seems like it seems like I was I was looking at some uh, video documentary. <clears throat> excuse me about uh, the Appalachian Mount Mountains, and somebody found and and videoed a uh, ridge or a, uh, large rocks and stuff with glyphs on them, and and they claimed that the glyphs went way way back, way way back. And oh, well, yeah, you know, um, what's crazy is like, you know, like we have one of the oldest uh, burial mounds from the Cherokee here right outside of Knoxville. And there are caves, there are cave writings and stuff in it and rocks. Stop. There are rocks that they found, you know, from um, the only other place in the world that these rocks come from are like Israel or Egypt or something like that, you know. So they, they've, there's a lot of strange stuff. There was pyramids, you know, they talk about. They just now released the information about the giant pyramid that was at the bottom of Norse Lake that they, you know, put water over. And they had a lot of research done with that. And they just now released information with that. And everybody and, talking about it. And, and for all the listeners that don't know where Norris Lake is, is that in Tennessee? It is. Okay. <laughs> um well, or the Norris Dam. They built the dam. That's what it did. It was Norris Dam. They built the dam there because we have a huge... A huge dam there that could be powering, you know, the properties and stuff. Mm -hmm. And instead of powering the property, it's um, go in there and watch your brother for a minute for me. Here, hold on, hang on one sec. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, Tess. Across the mountains from you, absolutely. Interesting. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, this, I mean, she can go on and on and on with encounters and stories. And it, it's just amazing because, you know, I, I've come across this with a lot of other people with interviewing them, uh, with being on property they own because i think well, how much acres are around you almost a thousand or something or more you're muted baby muted. yeah oh my god you're, okay so you go. i do that now um my neighbor beside me um which they're an earth conservation kind of place they have like 500 or more acres beside me on one side on the other side i'm the last house before you get to the lake if you follow this way, um, and my neighbors, there's no other way to get back to the property. There's one other property between mine and the, the lake where TV or T, you know, TVA owns all that. So, yeah, there's a few thousand acres right here that is not manned, not touched, you know. Hmm. I, I found it interesting. To, Sonia, I, I, I found it interesting that you were mentioning the caves with uh, inscriptions possibly dating back to Israel or whatever. What other country did you mention? Or Egypt, yeah. Yeah, no, that's interesting to me because supposedly in the Grand Canyon, in the western part of state, yeah. the western part of the country, uh, there are also glyphs and artifacts uh, recovered from some of those areas off public, off limits to, to the public, uh, from Egypt. Yeah. And we're led to believe that this country was first discovered by Columbus. So. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's crazy was that even the Cherokee talk about when they got here, that there were people already here. And they are the ones that maintained the, maintained the pyramids in the first place mm -hmm. or these pyramids that were there, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the pyramids, that, you know, there's all kinds of pyramids here, especially in between where we all live, um, but they're upside down and in the ground, which is, you know, but the energy that resonates in these areas, and it makes you wonder if that's not why they do these secret laboratories in these, these certain places with the energy that resonates. I don't think I'm at a fault line or one of the, whatever you call them lines, you know, uh, I'm having total brain fog today. It was not, I was not prepared for this, but, um, the ley lines. There we go. Um, I don't think that we're near one, but it doesn't, I don't think, you know, usually people talk about bad stuff happening. Mm -hmm. The property out here makes like makes you a better person. And I don't know how to describe well, that, but. The last map that I seen, and you can go online to see the ley lines, they go all over, they spider all over uh, the country underneath the oceans. They connect the world. Uh, between the uh, Pacific and Atlantic Ocean down as far as is Antarctica. So they're all over. And that includes Tennessee, too. Um, yeah, it's like veins, you know, it's the veins of the earth. It's the energy that runs through it, too. Mm -hmm. It's like main artery stuff. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't, for one, believe that, uh, you know, Americans were the first people here. You know, there was something here yeah. before, long, long before us. Long, long. Well, even if the Cherokee, if they, them being there, they said there were people here before them. Mm -hmm. You know? It's, That'd have to be a lot for you to admit, you know, if you weren't claiming that. <laughs> it wasn't true. Yeah. The whole tribe of people are like, we'll be honest with you. You know, that's why we didn't make a stink about it. <laughs> so we're not making a big deal about it now. There were already people here when we got here. Mm -hmm. And they know that. Well, that's interesting that you, you've had all this activity around your house. And, um, well, if you get a chance, grab a, grab a photo if you can. Grab a photo and share it with the world. Yeah, I've got, some, I've got some photos. I've got pictures of feet prints. Because I honestly, like, I'm so lazy. I'm just, I, I don't take and my what, phone out. And whatever you do, Sonia, don't 
don't list your location, you know, specifically. Yeah. In well, you start Georgia. talking about where I live, and I'm just like an open book. You get to talking about it, and I'll tell you about it. And, and, and I don't really, people, like, even if you did, like, um, come up here, like, people don't, people don't get out of the cars up here. You'd be, like, I don't care who you are, you'd be about too scared to come up here anyway. People won't go down the driveways up here, mm -hmm. you know. And you just don't have keep to worry about too just keep in mind that that if you ever take a photo, that if you leave that data information, that date and time stamp on your photo, uh, other people with 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 uh, with the right expertise can take that information and pinpoint exactly where that photo was taken through GPS. Mm -hmm. But you can go to and and Chris probably knows this. You can go to your go to your phone and shut off that setting. Right. When we yeah. buy cameras and cell phones, those settings are all on default. But we can go in there and shut that off, shut those settings off, so that when you do take a photo and you do want to share it on social media, uh, you don't have bad people. Uh, yeah spying on you and, and uh, going right out there so just something to keep in mind yeah like yeah we keep a pretty good um everything out here between us and the neighbors you can't get on or off the property for five miles each way without all of us having cameras and all of us knowing who's here and who's not who come down the driveway and who didn't who's parked where they shouldn't be parked That's we try idea. to Ah, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I let people know right up, like, uh, we don't mess around with trespassers. You know, if I think it, I think the law in Tennessee is that if you wound somebody in the woods and they were on your property, it's their responsibility to get themselves to the hospital or something like that. So, really? something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, my experience in uh, in the Smoky Mountains with the Appalachian people. Uh, I found them to be very, very friendly, very, very welcoming, and very, very curious about me, the Yankee, <laughs> coming, <laughs> coming, to yeah. their, coming to their area and stuff. But um, I really, my wife and I both, we really enjoyed chit-chatting with, with the different people and uh, sharing experiences with them and they in turn opened up and, and uh, were very, very accommodating. And I just absolutely love the Southern hospitality, really. Everyone should experience yeah. that down there. But <laughs> we really had a good time down there. Yeah, yeah, you come to our front door and knock on our front door and we'll give you any, we'll give you the shirt off our back. But you sneak around our property at night and we get a little bit different attitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's a different world down there, but uh, I'll tell you, if yeah. I had the extra money, no, if I had the extra money, I'd be down there buying up property. Yeah, it's like it's it's, it's something uh, like you know, I know I'm an hour away from everything. Like I'm an hour away from town. You want to yeah. go to Walmart? That's an hour away. You want to go out to eat? That's an hour away. You know, um, no, that's, that's fine. I, I couldn't get used to that, and I couldn't get used to living in the mountains because, uh, from what I've seen up there. Um, there's no county streets, there's no DPW, there's nobody to lift a broken branch off the street. Uh, if you get snowed in, I guess it's up to you to snow your, you know, shovel your way out. And yeah, uh, you know, up until recently, they just now last few years started salting the roads out here, which is wow. Really? Just when I was getting used to driving in it, <laughs> I started mm -hmm. salting the roads. I was like, when do we, when do we start doing that? You know, most of the time it rains right before it snows in Tennessee, so that don't uh, do no good. But I appreciate the effort. Yeah, in a lot of ways, Sonia, I, I, you know, I appreciate living in the city. I'm five mm -hmm. minutes away from a major hospital. Um, I, I can ride a bike to any store or restaurant I want if I wanted to, but yeah. uh, I don't have the I don't have the peace and tranquility that you might find and the beauty that you might find say in rural parts like Tennessee down there. I just don't yeah, know. It can, it, can, it can be a blessing and a curse because it can put you in a, uh, you know, they say things move a little slower in the country. 
Mm-hmm. That's true. So it puts you in this like procrastination mode that, you know, it's a way it'll be okay until tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So it just feels like things run a little slower and the day will be gone before you know it. Especially living in the valley. I live in the valley. So I think the sun comes out at like noon and it goes away at like four. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. So, uh, so when they, when the Sasquatches eat eggs, are they eating the, the shell and all? Or do they suck? Um, sometimes, egg sometimes egg. I don't find them, but I don't know. It's like we have, you know, other little critters around here. But sometimes I'll find them where just they sucked it out the bottom and just left the shell. And then mm-hmm. sometimes I'll find them like cracked in half. Mm-hmm. I think it just depends on how clean they are. I don't know. Sometimes you get them right out of the chicken and they got feathers and stuff on them. So you well, know, that's and I don't clean them. I just take them right out there. We don't, you know, that's yeah. That's exactly what I found in in my research as well. Uh, a lot of times they will uh, suck the, the white and the yellow out of the eggs and discard the rest. Yeah. But, um, and you can tell, like, um, I, I found them, like, scattered and stuff. I found them on up the trail where it looked like mm-hmm. they took one with them and ate, mm-hmm. ate it and just, like, you know, threw it down. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> but normally they just eat it all, all there because I don't, I don't leave a bunch, but I leave a few and I don't do it. I don't do it so often they're expecting it and I don't do it on a schedule. Like, hmm. you know, I didn't want to, I'm so flaky. I don't want them to be disappointed in me by hmm. expecting something every Tuesday at eight o'clock when I can't do that <laughs> possibly. Now, you know what I mean? So your Sasquatch is like cabbage and Brussels sprouts. Oh yeah. Like, and um, like we had zucchinis and squashes. They'll eat oranges. And I, I've talked to other people about them, like saying that the Sasquatches don't like oranges. I said, did you peel the oranges? Yeah. They were like, no. I was like, why don't you peel in the oranges? They might have a different tune. Mm-hmm. You know, different. You ever bit into an orange peel? It's awful. Yeah. But it, <laughs> but it also has a lot of, it also has a lot of nutritional value. Yeah, Very but that's like with the, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, like, I, I feed them cakes. They like bread. Mm-hmm. Um, they like muffins, biscuits. Oh, they love biscuits. Uh, tomatoes, just, of course. Watermelon <laughs> is one of their favorites. Biscuits and gravy? I, you know, I've never gave them my mom's gravy. I don't want them beating on the front door. <laughs> we'll just stick with her biscuits because she makes the best yeah. biscuits already. I'm you, like if I, made, if I let them have some of her gravy, she'll have to fix it for them every time. And my mom won't even, she knows they're out here, but she doesn't want to talk about them. She no. doesn't want to think about them because she can't. She's scared. She's scared of the dark. Yeah. She's she's seen some stuff that just, just scared her to death and she knows they're out there and she just... Mm-hmm. She doesn't trust anybody, so well, let here, along a Sasquatch. Up here, in, where it's very highly populated, uh, the Sasquatch have been known to eat McDonald's sandwiches and French fries, <laughs> discarded yeah. sandwiches, uh, yeah. barbecue ribs, and everything else. Anything that they can fish out of the trash, they'll eat. But uh, oh. uh, they survive on regional uh, was- uh, dumps and stuff up here. Yeah, see, like, um, they eat, like, uh, I had leftover ham from Thanksgiving last, last year, and, like, the ham bone and stuff, mm. uh, they took it, um, trying to think what else that was kind of, like, different that they took. I've had uh, salmon, I had a bunch of shrimp, too, that, uh, that were, like, on the verge of being, like, bad, so I, like, boiled them, flash boiled them, and set them out mm. there for them. They eat them. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, they love Oreos. <laughs> Who doesn't? But yeah, uh, uh, I can't even think. Let's just, just like anything, chips. They love like certain like um, you know, Mamiya. Um, corn chips. They really like corn chips. That's one of their favorite things because I think it's the salt and stuff in it. I heard Doritos too. Yeah, you know they're so expensive though. Like I can only like they're five dollars a bag. I can't. It's me or them, and I like I like the sweet chili ones. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if my mom found out I was giving the Bigfoots uh, Doritos, she would. She'd probably beat me to death. She'd have a. Why are you wasting our time? Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, but I bought them. It don't matter. <laughs> Stop feeding the Doritos to the Bigfoot. Yeah, she gets mad at me all the time because she. She just she, <laughs> she just thinks I'll be out there just feeding them for because I am. Now, now some of the earlier. Um, news clippings of the gentleman that uh, that was held captive abducted 
claims that he gave he gave uh, Sasquatch some Copenhagen chew, and apparently that's that how cool. he, that's how he escaped because uh, the Sasquatch took the whole can and emptied it in his mouth, and he started tripping. Um, mm-hmm. That that was his cue to escape. <laughs> that's how he escaped supposedly back into the civilization and stuff. <laughs> well, cool. like, I, have my, I have my I have my theories on like things like that with them. <laughs> you know? Like uh, we we have a hemp farm up here. So uh we grow a lot of hemp and we discard a lot of leaves and stuff like that. Most of the time we burn them. But sometimes, you know, they get left in the woods for things to eat. And I'm pretty sure they enjoy them a whole lot. <laughs> There's a uh, uh, Sonia, there's a report. Uh, I don't know what state it was. I can't. I can't remember. I've I've been through so many hundreds of thousands of reports and stuff. But but um, the bottom line is is that uh, a gentleman was somewhat of a recluse, a loner, living by himself, and um, he had sasquatches around his property. It might have been California, in, in fact, it might have been around Humboldt County, California. And uh, apparently there were some growers out there of marijuana and um, they became nasty with him one day. Yeah. Yeah. I know and, what you're talking, you're talking about. You're the one that killed him? The one that got, no, they, got killed? No they, no, they didn't kill him, oh. but they threatened him. Well, there was another, there was another story about people that went up there to grow, like a big group of people that went together and the Sasquatch came in on them and attacked them in one of their fields. And they actually killed one of the guys. You know, they blamed the guy at the, that was growing the weed or whatever. Yeah. They blamed him and said he murdered the guy. But the, everybody that was around there said that that's not what happened. That Bigfoot killed this person and they got yeah. away. You know? I imagine it happens quite a bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And, and of course, they're going to blame the guy growing this stuff, not the not some crazy story. But the, the three witnesses who said, hey, this guy didn't do this. <laughs> the Sasquatch killed him, you know, and they were like, uh. You know, that's going to be something that that they didn't even let those people testify in court. So they had to have been like, all right, you either change your story, change your tune or whatever. You know, they tell everybody the truth, but they probably like, OK, you either change your tune or change your story or, you know, we're going to charge you guys, too, with the murder since you last one seen him. And you can imagine them being like, oh, well, OK, then it was it was the guy we were working for. <laughs> <laughs> in this, in this, uh, in I don't prison with him. You know, nobody's gonna believe. There was a yeah. there was a man in Louisiana. Was it Louisiana? I believe he um he murdered his friend. They were out fishing, and he murdered his friend. And when they asked him why he, why he murdered his friend, he said his friend kept threatening to call Bigfoot in to eat him, and he had to kill his friend to keep his friend from calling in Bigfoot to mess with him. It mm-hmm. scared him so bad that he killed his friend. Because he was trying to call him Bigfoot mm-hmm. on a fishing trip. <laughs> in this situation, uh, the growers came to the man's house on ATVs <laughs> and rifles, and um, while while they were threatening this man with with their rifles and stuff, apparently the Sasquatch that this recluse had befriended stepped out of the tree line and made his presence known to the growers growling yeah. and uh, looking uh, ferocious and it caused it caused the growers to take their weapons and their ATVs fly out of there and never return and and I've seen this a couple times in different reports where uh, you become you become known to the bigfoots and sasquatch and they develop some type of trust with you they become they become the goose. They become the donkey, the watchdog of the property, and they really do. Yeah, that's that's well, what. I that's like. Uh, I think she's out there anyway. Like I have always felt like safe with them, and like for them being out here. Like I don't worry about like any of the other animals. Now, one night, which is around that same time, it was like February or March. That same time, and they're not around much. I I about called in a black panther on myself because I didn't know that that's I didn't know that that's what it was oh god dogs about wipe me out um 
because I went outside because the dogs were barking at something and I went outside to check to see what she was barking at. And I didn't take, I usually take my gun and I, I never really take flashlight much, but usually I carry those things on me. And for some reason this time I didn't. And I got halfway in the middle of the field and I could hear my dad's voice. My dad's dead, but I could hear my dad's voice going, stupid girl, go in there and get your gun. Why did you come out here with no gun? You need to go back in and get your gun. And I was just like, no, it's cool. Um, like arguing with that little, you know, with my dad's voice inside my head. Like, no, my sister had people spending in the night in a tent outside, you know, right out here. And I was just like, oh, I can't, I don't want to mess with them. I don't want them to freak out, you know, because uh, my friend, he has PTSD anyway from being in Iraq. So I didn't really want to cause a scene. You know, I didn't want him to wake up to gunfire coming over his tent in the middle of the night. But my dog is raising hell and the way she barks, I know by the way she barks what's going on. Um, I don't know. You let, you spend this much time with your animals. You just know. And she was barking like, help, help, help me. Come out here and help me. I have no help. Help me. And like I said, I got to the middle of the field and I just got that overwhelming. I could hear my dad's voice going, Oh, go get your gun, go get your gun and let off a couple rounds, go get your gun and let off a couple rounds. I like just resonating. I was like, Oh, we're cool. So about the time he thinking that I, was looking and I thought I saw the dog because she was barking in that general area and I hollered for her. I was like yo Bella come here I was like Whoosh. you know whistled and told her to come here and she's coming towards me and all I can see is it's just a giant shadow and I was just like okay and about that time I hear something behind me and I'm like just full gallop like I, I was like oh my god and it's headed right towards me it's at a full gallop and I'm like do I turn around and face what's about to eat me or do I just stand here because my dad told me to go get my gun and I didn't and now I'm about to get eat so I'm like, I whip around, like I whip around to see what's like about to get me. And when I do, it's my sister's dog coming at me, not something else. So what's in front of me. So when I went back around, it was a, it was a black Panther. Like I know what it was. I know what I saw. TWRA wants to argue with me and say that I have to have a clear picture of it. Well, I got one in my head. I can tell you that much. Um, but my dog, she ran on past me. She didn't, you know, she didn't stop at me. She ran past me and chased it off. So she just barely like saved me for that moment. But again, that was the same time that the Bigfoots come or the Bigfoots aren't out here. You know, the other Bigfoot comes through, but he doesn't stay. Other things come through the area, but never stay. They stay, but like, um, I don't know. Um, so she saved my life. But that morning, like about 25 minutes later, because I stood out in front of my house listening to the, the, the Black Panther um, screaming through the woods. And I... Uh, about 25, 25 minutes or to an hour later, my sister's boyfriend comes up to me and he was like, Hey, and I was like, what? He was like, something got one of our goats. And I said, yeah, I said down there behind the bus. And he was like, yeah, how'd you know? I said, yeah, it was a black Panther. And we go down there and there's big cat prints, you know, all over the place, you know? And I was like, look, that's a big cat for sure. And it got, it definitely got one of the goats. Um, our other goats were tied up around it and they, you know, it was so sad because, you know, they had to watch it, but I guess I interrupted it when I came out there. What got me to come out there in the first place was that little voice inside my head that tells me, Hey, something's wrong. And it was my dad's voice, you know, like, Hey, go check on my goats. This was just like a right after my dad died. So it hadn't been that long, but it was like, they're his goats, you know, he, he loved his goats. So he's like, go check on my goats, you know, but, um, it was funny because we found the cat prints and they were all over the place. And I was like, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a big cat. And my sister's boyfriend looks at me and he goes, how do you know? We've all been walking around down here tonight, today. Mm -hmm. And I was like, cause that's a cat print and I've got shoes on. I was like, what? And he was just I was like, what do you mean? And then I followed the, the drag marks, which it was a pretty clean kill. It didn't make a mess. Um, they never do, but there was like a drag mark and like, I don't know if there were two of them or if it was just the same one or what happened, but the blood trail, cause it took some of it with it, like the inside of it took that with it and it was gone. Um, but the trail mark ended right at a row of like trees that go across the Creek. So, but you don't, you don't have cougars down there or anything, do you? So, um, yeah. well, they, yeah, they, yeah, we have mountain lions. Um, the neighbors have spotted a couple my other neighbors a bunch of people have spotted the black panther everybody's seen him up here we all know that he's here we can't stop him for a picture or nothing uh 
Yeah, and, we, and this year we've had more bear activity in the past couple of years than ever because of the, you know, um, because of all the fires in the Smokies. Oh, okay. Pushing the wildlife. Yeah, so it's been displacing oh. animals left and right. So. Now, Sonia, yeah. Standing Stones wants to know, does your Bigfoot, do they have cone-shaped heads and no shoulders, or what, what, what do they look like? They have, well, some of them, like, some of them had that, like, cone shape, you know, that tall, like, I don't know. They're shorter and squattier, like, their heads are kind of smaller, and they're kind of broader in the shoulders, so they got the kind of smaller head, and they're not as, they're not that big, like, I know I say that, but, like, you know, seven and a half, eight feet. I mean, I know that's big, but it's not that big. Um, <laughs> but they're, like, because some of them, they're, like, six foot. Some of the smaller, like the small female, the watcher, she's like six, six and a half foot. She's not that tall. Um, uh, yeah. I mean. Hold on one sec. Interesting, isn't it, Val? Yeah, that's a good question. I thought you knew about all this. I thought I discussed it with you. Uh, not with not with Sonia. Uh, this is yeah. the first time so. hearing about it. But uh, uh, it reminds me of um, Janice Carter and some of the experiences she grew up with, also in Tennessee. So it's quite interesting that uh, uh, she's from Tennessee and she's she has these personal interactions with these things. So yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, like, you know, there's a, there's, I've met a lot of, it seems like there's a lot of female people like have property. And I don't know if it's just that we, as women, pay attention to details. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know if we just have more time to be looking in the woods. Um, but we have a lot, a lot of women have a lot of like interactions or a lot of like bonds with the Bigfoots on their property or have a lot, you know. Well, it's always been known that, that Bigfoots prefer, prefer, uh, uh, female contact rather than male. Probably for obvious I think we reasons. have better energy. You know, I like seem less less, you know, likely to fight. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's I don't know. I, I, I think we do put off a different Sasquatch, feminine energy as women. Sasquatch is we are uh, portals after all. Mm -hmm. Sasquatch is um have learned over an evolution of time that uh, males generally respond in ways that probably are not God. conducive to friendship and communication and stuff. And that might be a reason why. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? But I really, greatly appreciate you jumping on short notice and everything. So uh, I well, really do. I probably have a lot better stories that I didn't have to stutter through. Like had I had been informed and I wasn't trying to babysit and get my brakes on my car fixed. I can't find my socket that I just had like a couple of hours ago. And that's the problem. <laughs> well, I don't have it here. That's for sure. <laughs> you guys haven't seen it? No, no I got Grizz, have you seen it? I don't have it here. No, I have not, ladies and gentlemen. I sure haven't. So. Oh, that's good. It's hot in here. But no, but I do appreciate you, and I'll call you after the show, hon. All right. It's been my pleasure talking to you, Sonia. Thank you very much. Yeah, anytime, you know. <laughs> Maybe if I had a little more warning, I'd be a little better at my stories. <laughs> I'd love talking. It was a pleasure, y'all. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you, hon. Talk to you in a few, baby. Bye. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Very cool, uh, Chris. Very it, cool. it is interesting. It, it mm -hmm. never, you know, I, I never forget. Look at the rain. Look at the hell how beautiful. I'm going to get back back. You know, and it's just like, yeah, I see it. You know, and she's like, I see it. And I'm like, <laughs> Anyways, but you, you just had to be there. Very, you know? very nice, very friendly, very social. Um, 
very expressive young lady there. She was very, very cool. Enjoy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she really is. Uh, she, uh, it's, I'll, I'll tell you off air how we met. It's 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 wild. It's by another psychic, and it, it's just it's a long. It's it's it, it it's fascinating. We had to go on two national shows in America to tell her how we met and how it all went down. So yeah, it was pretty interesting. You know the uh, the impetus that that kind of set me on a course here to get involved with Bigfoot started with um, my seeing a uh, an Indian man appear in my in my bedroom in the doorway of my bedroom one night and followed up with with a, uh, a strange telephone call from a friend of mine who asked me what shift I was working on because she says <clears throat> she says that uh, she knows a lady that wants to meet me. In our line of work, when you get those kind of phone calls where a lady wants a lady wants to meet you, your red flag ought to go up right away because you don't know what that's all about. You don't want to be accused of anything. No, uh, no, you don't no, want to no. be involved in anything that's that's not right. But I was a little leery, uh, a little leery and dubious. And uh, I did meet with her. I did go over there on a day shift in uniform, in a car. And the first thing that this woman did when she looked in my eyes, she says, you're an old soul. That was my, that was my introduction to this woman. She says, you've been here a long time. You've been here many times. She says, do you want me to tell you how you died in your previous life? My response was, no, thank you. Not really. She says, do you get a lot of headaches? And I said, no, but I, I suspected that that had something to do with that previous question. Do you want me to tell you how you died in your previous life? No, no, I don't want to. I don't want to know this. It's not my business to know this. She says, who is this lady that follows you around that's always with you? She's a tall lady. She looks at you. She covets you like, like a son or a grandson or somebody. I says, I don't know. Well, she says, uh, she says, do you work alone a lot? And I said, I do. She says, I I'm going to tell you something right now. She says, I'm not going to, I don't want to threaten. I don't want to sound like I'm making a threat. I don't want you to fear what I'm going to tell you. But, and remember, this is a lady that I've never seen before. I never spoke with before. And she's coming out to me with this, this kind of stuff. She says, I see a red car, I see round red taillights, and I hear gunshots. She says, you be careful. That was her message to me, her direct message to me. And the final thing, the final, one of the final things that, that I recall that she said to me was, you're looking for somebody. And she says, just give me a yes or no answer. And I said, yes. She said, they know. She didn't say he. She didn't say she. She said, they know you're looking for them. They'll let you know when they're ready to be found. This came after my phone call to the mother in Ohio regarding her missing son who had been missing over 30 years. This is what set me on the path to what I'm, what I'm telling you right now. So in the preceding night, uh, preceding white, uh, proceeding uh, weeks following that, I woke again from a sound sleep. And this is after my first experience with seeing a uh, specter or a man in my room that I thought was a thief, a burglar. And um, when I woke, when I opened up my eyes, there was nobody there, but I heard my name called. Now, I'm a completely sober man. I have no addictions, um, clear-minded, focused. But I heard my name as though somebody was standing over me calling my name, and my eyes popped wide open. So 
at that point, I knew in my heart it was it was me that had to do this to look for this young man, this 18 year old man, 19 year old man at the time, find him and and bring him home to his mother in Ohio. And as I stated earlier, it took 21 months for me to do this. I went to his service when, when his remains arrived in Ohio. I went to his service, eulogized his, his funeral, went to work the next day and promptly announced that I was retired. That's how I did it. And for me, it was a bit of self-redemption in that um, it was my way, my curtain call, my way to bow and say, thank you very much for allowing me to serve the community and service to mankind. And it was also my way of saying, um, you know, I'm not a perfect man. I'm an imperfect man. I admit that. And, um, you know, hopefully that means something to somebody. And in the end, that simple act of paying it forward for somebody else might have inspired somebody else down the road to do the same thing. That's how I got involved in Bigfootery today. And that's where I am. Yeah, you know, um, a lot of people don't know this, Val, and I never told you. You know, I deal with a lot of people with abilities. I have my true, uh, true uh, crime show on Fridays uh, that uh, we go over missing person cases, cold cases. And I have a panel of psychics, people with abilities that review the cases after we, we cover them. Mm -hmm. And um, i never forget, and this happened the past couple of months, is that uh, I was actually doing an interview with one of my uh, persons with abilities, and she was like, you know, that you almost died twice. And the first one I knew about the cancer. They found that by, by mistake. And the second one, I, I didn't know where she was going with it. And she told me that I was going to be set up on a call and I was going to get assassinated by another police officer. I was going to get shot in the back of the head. Mm. And she told me the person's name. And I literally had a meltdown for two days because this person was around my family. Mm -hmm. Uh, my kids, uh, he worked underneath me and, uh, I didn't believe it. So I went and sought other advice from other members of the panel that had no idea and asked a few questions without asking the questions out directly. And they confirmed it. And. Uh, that really turned my world upside down because during their, when I was doing narcotics, I was getting so close to uh, somebody and the council members, family members, and the corruption, and I'll leave it at that. But uh, that's when I knew it was my time. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I already had it planned be because of the corruption and everything going on and it's it's not like it was when we were in it's it's totally changed hey drew welcome drew uh so yeah we're broadcasting on his channel well you missed a lot thomas yeah it is a scary thought especially somebody that you actually trusted um so uh you know it's, it's taught me a lot uh, it's it's changed my life. Uh, I've gotten very spiritual. I became a reverend last year, which a lot of people do uh, or does know about that because of the paranormal uh, side of it as well. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to dive a little deeper. But Bigfoot, you know, has always fascinated me. And to hear people like Sonia and other people like Barry, it's common everyday practice to see or to intervene or to intertwine with these creatures or beings 
and it's no big deal. It's nothing to them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you all out here are trying whatever you're doing for years. And it's just like, we can walk out our back door. I'm like, Hey, mm -hmm. and then it's just, it's just amazing. Now we talked about this before. Why are they here? What are their purposes? So I do not know. Uh, I think there's more to it than what, what is led on to, but, uh, you know, her and I, we agree to disagree on certain topics. Uh, I don't think they're warm and fuzzy. She thinks they're all good, which, mm -hmm. you know, now she disagrees as she says, yes, there are probably some bad ones, but she's never had a bad encounter, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that does not mean that that does not exist. So am I nervous about walking her property? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, because how are they going to react to me? Mm -hmm. You know, being what I am with her now compared to her seeing her by herself all the time. You know, I mean, creatures change. People, creatures get jealous. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I don't have a crystal ball. I was going to buy one, but man, they are expensive now. Uh, I I have a friend in Michigan here uh, who 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 does a lot of gifting and baiting and and things of that nature. And by the way, the next time that you talk to Sonia, ask her, is it true from from her experience that female Sasquatches have a different scent? than males according to uh i'll just call him tony the females that he interacts with have a floral scent about them as though they take flowers and herbs similar to the way that the early colonials did before the the days of perfume and baths and showers and things of that nature he claims that the females uh um, bathe or douse himself in, in the different flowers and, and herbal plants to scent the uh, the smells and the odor. Well, and she'll tell you, Val, that there's some of their Sasquatches or Bigfoot are well groomed. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I've I'm seen talking like. You know, like like my beard, like mm -hmm. very well groomed and brushed, yeah, and almost as though they had a comb and a brush. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's like uh, okay, you know. So you know, and back to the tape recorders, the digital recorders that I was talking about for Sonia get on the show, ladies and gentlemen, is that Barbara Shoot uh, is going to be on outdoor Thursday. She would hide them around her property. I'm just going to grab one and not a whole bunch. And they would come up and they would hit the power button and turn them off and put them back. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a creature that knows how to turn on and off electronic device. Now, not only do they have these, but they will hide them around camp mm -hmm. while they're camping on her property. Mm -hmm. They will get mad and confiscate them all. And then right before they leave, they'll end up being stacked on the end of a picnic table and be like, hey, this and that something. Don't forget, don't forget your tape recorders. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now explain that. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes a lot of cognitive um, ability to think about that reasoning, logic, um, and things that we can't we can't rightly uh, explain, but we we're becoming increasingly familiar with in a lot of these reports and stuff. And that's the good thing about reports. We're learning, I'm learning a lot of stuff just by other people's experience and stuff. There you go. And all these people that you uh, <clears throat> interview and interact with Grizz, you're learning. I mean, you're, you're speaking like an expert now. And, and that's the, that's the glorious part of, of doing this. But, well, uh, you know, and I tell people, and it's funny, because I, I carry one of these out in the field. Mm -hmm. And they're like, why in the world do you carry one of these? And I'm like, you're real simple, because when you see a footprint, guess what? 
you extend it out and lay it in there and guess what you can retrieve possibly hair samples mm -hmm. i mean you know it's just small stuff like that people don't think about mm -hmm. you know and being a detective being in law enforcement you know we learn techniques we all had our own little fingerprint kits in the back of our squad cars you know to to play with and to use and so forth but you know the evidence is already out there it's already been presented now do i would like to have some of my own evidence be like man i got something that i can't explain that nobody else can explain well yeah i would mm -hmm. but you know it, ladies and gentlemen there are things out there that we will not know the answers to that people do like barry 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 is very intelligent mm -hmm. Barry wants to tell a lot, but Barry is also is very cautious because of what human beings can and will do to things mm -hmm. when they are scared and want something on a slab. Mm -hmm. And I always said that no matter how much you will try to get one on a slab, you may drop one because we know they bleed and we know they die. But the government's going to take it confiscate it before you even get it out. Just like that one incident with that juvenile one. Mm -hmm. Remember when they buried it and they confiscated that body? Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, that has long lasting effects on a, pe on a person, too. This guy, I don't believe he's, I believe he's still affected by the experience yes. that he had as a child. Do you get this? I believe that. Too. Yes, I do. Yeah. You could see it. Yes, it's I do. Obvious. It's apparent. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a, uh, you know, I, you know, I always liked, um, Scott Carpenter for some of the things that he's written, but one in particular was, was an expose about, about, um, his warning to people that decide to get into big footery and, and the toll that it takes on a person. I would invite anybody to read that and, uh, to, and and think about it because it's it's absolutely true. You get involved in this and it's it's a uh, rabbit hole that you you won't leave very easily. There's a passion that grows with it, but in that passion is the the beckoning finger that you can't see <clears throat> that draws you in deeper and deeper. And I'm in this very, very deep. Yeah, you are. You are. At, at some point, um, I may want to leave it. I'll just let it go at that. And uh, I think I anybody... will hunt your ass down, man, if you ever do that to me. I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No, I didn't know. Yeah. Standing Stones, thank you for ordering a T-shirt. Thank you, man. It really helps. But, you know, the thing, though, is, is that no matter what type of video evidence we have, what type of pictures we have, hairs, whatever, with the AI, uh, the artificial intelligence, it's never going to be good enough, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, what we do is, is, is we take what we have encounters in my personal encounters. Uh, I'm finding footprints in, in the local parks. Uh, when I go play disc golf, uh, which I thought it was Peridoria, and I had to validate it with very, uh, several other people just to make sure it was not me because, you know, you always don't want to think, you know, that's what it is at first. But we got our email address down at the bottom. It's been flashing throughout the show. We want to hear from you guys, ladies and gentlemen. We want to hear your theories and thoughts. You know, we're not here to say you're right, who's wrong. You know, there's so many possibilities. There's no experts in this field. That's why he's a data miner. You know, that's why he collects everything. And he tries to make sense of everybody's experiences because they're so vast and so many different types. But if you look in law enforcement terms, to the totality of the circumstances, which means everything as a whole, it always comes back in first in a, in a full circle, mm -hmm. and somehow it is connected. 
Uh, now, do I believe Bigfoot comes in and out of UFO? I couldn't tell you. Some people say they see it before or an after UFO incident or a sighting. I don't know. Some people think that uh, Bigfoot or orbs. I, I don't know. I've never experienced that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, how can you credit or discredit somebody that says they see things? Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. So that's where I stand. So what do Very you well said? Very well yeah. said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very man. That, you know what? It has been a great show, and Wonderful. I had a ball. And I'm glad Sonia had, uh, had the opportunity to jump on. Yeah, we got it's her music right now. Absolutely. But yeah, pleasure. but I'm glad she jumped on. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought I'd talked to you about her before. So no, but I'm glad that uh, yeah. I have to put a, a, a face with the name now. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's her right there, ladies and gentlemen. So I, I do a couple of shows with her. Very nice. Uh, yeah, thank you. I really appreciate that. Very She's nice. very special to me. Crazy Witch, Thomas Schwine. Guess Schwine, yes. Dermal Ridges, absolutely. I will drive up to Indiana. It's not that far. Uh, it is far, but you know what? I'll make it a trip, and we'll go some squatching, baby. I got equipment to go out in the field and do live shows. So, yes, crazy witch and everybody. Drew, I'm glad you stopped in. We got another show coming up at 9 o'clock Eastern time. But, Val, what do you think overall? Are you happy? Uh, it's wonderful, man. It, it, I'll tell you what. They get better each week that it, the, I see this here. It's, it's uh, it, you know, it leaves me speechless. It, it's just a, a great, great thing. But um, the guests, the, the listeners, they're all good people. And I'm just, I'm just elated that I could be here and, and share, you know, these things with them and, and listen and read their, their comments and stuff. But most of all, Chris, you're, you're a wonderful, wonderful host. And I'm, well, I'm I appreciate that. Friend. And I'm glad you're part of it. I'm glad you're my friend. I'll tell you that. That's right. Rock hey. it on, brothers. Have a good one. Good, Take good, care. Good Thank you, guys. Bye. All right. We'll see you. Bye-bye. It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, ship, should we run? 
<laughs> no. Action. It's a grizzly. Or oh, shit. Should we run? <laughs> okay. It's a grizzly. Are you sure it's not Jim Monk? No, I got out of here. <laughs> it's a grizzly. Oh, money here. Huh? Maybe it is a chipmunk. <gasps> it's a grizzly. Oh, it. Are we gonna die? I don't know. We're just gonna sit here and listen and watch. Let's get out of here, maybe. <laughs> Fall! <laughs>